Hey everyone, welcome to Neuropod. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and in this episode, I'll share what Elon Musk and Max Hodak have said about artificial intelligence and how it might affect Neuralink, or vice versa. I'm proud of this episode, so please do me a favor and watch this one the whole way through. If you like it and you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you don't like it, that's cool too. Don't feel bad about never watching another Neuropod episode again. Artificial intelligence is considered artificial simply because it's not naturally produced human intelligence. However, the line between the two types of intelligence is becoming more and more blurry over time. Here's one short clip from 2017 of Elon warning about the danger of AI. AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. Elon has warned numerous times about the danger of AI and often cites how artificial intelligence has enabled machines to overtake humans in activities with increasing degrees of freedom. For example, computers could beat humans in a simple game of checkers. Then, a computer beat a world champion chess master. Now, any smartphone could beat anyone in chess. Also, there's a hugely popular game in Asia called Go. From what I understand, it has more variability than chess and one of the world's best Go players was beaten by DeepMind's AlphaGo computer in 2016. Computers and machines are becoming more technologically advanced, and some people like Elon and Max feel that AGI will come soon. AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, is often used as a noun. I like to think of it as basically a future robot that has the same or greater general intelligence level as humans. There are infinite predictions as to when this point in time will occur, but there seems to be general consensus that it is bound to happen at some point in the future. This is the point in time that Elon and Max seem to be most concerned about. Once computers surpass humans in intelligence, there's no guarantee that humanity will continue to survive. Max Hodak, the president of Neuralink, discusses this in more detail in a post from 2020. I'll post a link to the full article and share the text on the video, but here's a slightly edited, more concise version of his thoughts. Quote, around 200,000 years ago, humans were a relatively undifferentiated primate living on the African savanna. Today, humans absolutely dominate the planet. We have killed or otherwise driven to extinction everything between Homo sapiens and pantroglodytes. This didn't happen because humans were stronger or faster or more efficient, but because we were more intelligent. These statements are undeniable, so knowing that our evolutionary advantage has been our collective intelligence, the logic extends that if a way more intelligent species just plopped onto the earth somehow, humans could eventually be driven to extinction. I suppose that this can be a really scary thought, but we have one advantage that is so simple, yet it's very possible that it'll save us entirely. It's the fact that we're aware of the threat to our intelligence superiority. Let's use a pretty wild and not so realistic metaphor to show why this makes sense. Imagine if pigs were at the top of the food chain. All of the pigs keep eating the dinosaurs, whales, elephants, lizards, and literally all the other animals. They continue growing fatter and fatter for quite some time. That is, until humans come along and start loving bacon. Now, humans start eating all animals and pigs slowly start to disappear. In this scenario, Pigs wouldn't have been overtaken if they were aware of the threat to their consumption superiority. They would realize that humans are going to eat them, so they'd start figuring out how to fire up the baby chicken eggs and eat those bad boys for breakfast alongside their human bacon. Bringing back to artificially intelligent computers compared to humans, and I think the biggest advantage humans have is that at this very moment, we're number one in the history of the world in terms of collective species intelligence. We also have the advantage of realizing that that's the case. Therefore, as long as we make sure to spot any threats to our intelligence superiority, we should be good. This is how I think the vast majority of society feels, including myself. Explicitly stated, AGI is not a threat now, nor will it ever be, given how dumb computers really are. However, after reading Max's article, watching about 42,168 videos, and feeling like I've heard almost every recorded word that Elon's publicly stated, I've come to realize that AGI probably could become an actual threat if people weren't trying so hard to minimize the negative effects of being a non-intellectually superior species. This is an ongoing debate, 
So although Elon's concerned, there are many others who are not concerned about the threat of artificial intelligence. For example, in 2019, at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference, Alibaba founder Jack Ma spoke on stage with Elon Musk. I never in my life, and especially last two years when people talk about AI, say a uh, human, human being will be controlled by machines, I never think about that. I think it's, 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 it's impossible, <laughs> right? It's impossible because human beings, they are different. Machines are invented by human beings. And according to the science, right, humans can never create another animal that is smarter than humans. Especially when you have so many smart people, it's impossible to make another smart people. I, I very much disagree with that. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, but not, but the, I mean, the first thing we should assume is that we are very dumb um, and we can, de we can definitely make things smarter than ourselves. I mean, the, they didn't used to be humans, right? So the, uh, then the, our early civilization was very primitive. Um, we didn't have any technology, really. We we're just like running around, you know, trying to not get eaten uh, or just trying to survive a winter. Now we have like heating and we grow food. This is all new stuff. So, you know, things have obviously gotten way more smarter than the past, way smarter. So that's going to continue. We are not the last step in evolution. So the most important thing, like I said, the most important mis mistake I see smart people making is assuming that they're smart. The fact that the world's number one society improvement guru thinks that AI is a real threat that has continually made me reconsider the potential impact of artificial general intelligence. In prior Elon interviews, he stated it's inevitable that computers will be far superior to humans in every way. He's also referenced how it's not a guarantee that a future with vastly smarter AI will be bad though. Instead, those artificially intelligent beings could treat humans the way humans currently treat ants. In most scenarios, Humans won't go out of their way to kill ants, but if they're a nuisance in any way, we won't think twice about smushing them. That could be how AI feels about humans in the future. Now, here are some clips that really made me start to realize that AI and computers are progressing faster than I thought. I'm still not overly concerned about the possibility of artificially intelligent beings taking over, but this clip was pretty cool to see. In Max Hodak's post, he linked to a video from OpenAI showing a simple game of hide and seek in 2019. Today, we ask if comparably simple rules and multi-agent competition can also lead to intelligent behavior in a new virtual world. These agents are playing hide and seek. These agents have just begun learning, but they've already learned to chase and run away. This is a hard world for a hider who has only learned to flee. However, after training in millions of rounds of hide and seek, the hiders find a solution. The hiders learn to use rudimentary tools to their advantage. By grabbing and locking these blocks, they can create their own shelter. The seekers are locked in place for a brief period at the start of the game, giving hiders a chance to prepare. Even so, the hiders must learn to collaborate, accomplishing tasks that would be impossible for any single individual. The hiders are not the only ones who can learn to use tools. After many generations of failing to break into the shelter, the seekers learn to jump over obstacles using ramps. However, after many millions of rounds of having their shelter breached, the hiders learn to take away the primary tool the seekers have at their disposal. Note that we did not explicitly incentivize any of these behaviors. As each team learns a new skill, it implicitly changes the challenges the other team faces, creating a new pressure to adapt. We've also put these agents into a more open-ended environment, randomizing the objects, team sizes, and walls. In this world, they learn to construct their own shelter from scratch, requiring that they arrange multiple objects into precise structures. It's pretty amazing how many things these bots can figure out. According to their website, OpenAI is an AI research and deployment company. Their mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. In another video using their GPT-3 tech, it is amazing how much they can generate very human-like responses. This clip is from 2020. Down the road, that means that eventually it may be possible to scan and upload a human brain. So what do you think are some of the benefits of that? The benefits are uncertain, but it's likely to save many, many lives and prevent or treat many brain conditions and diseases. 
Yeah, I agree. Do you think that a cat could pilot a rocket? Yes, if it evolved enough. <laughs> if it evolved enough. <laughs> I like that answer. Uh, what if the cat is just an ordinary house cat? Could it pilot a rocket then? No. <laughs> okay. Why not? Because a cat would not be allowed to enter the rocket in the first place. <laughs> Pro probably not. But if a cat were allowed, would it be able to work the controls? And if not, why not? The cat would be able to work the controls, but it would not be preferable. The purr of the engine would be very distracting. <laughs> the purr of the engine. That's very funny. Uh, do you like to tell a lot of jokes? Yes, I love to tell jokes. <laughs> this is yet another example of how much progress computers have made. Clearly, this conversation involves nuanced types of speech. It's pretty incredible to see computers having the ability to develop a joke or a pun in the way that it did here. I also think it's worth providing a reference point for how much progress has been made over the past seven years. In 2013, IBM's Watson computer defeated Jeopardy! champions Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter. Although this is not a truly fair comparison to the API that OpenAI has developed, as of 2020, it's cool to see what was already possible many years ago. That was the moment when I knew it's over. The category is 19th century novelists. What Watson wants to do then is preserve the lead, not take a big risk, especially with Final Jeopardy, because just like for humans, Final Jeopardy is hard for Watson. Now we come to Watson, who is Bram Stoker and the wager. It's been fascinating to see some of the tangible progress that's been made. Maybe it is possible for computers to become smarter than us after all. This reminds me, the most important takeaway I personally had from Max's post was that he wasn't always concerned about the oncoming threat of AGI. In fact, he says he was an AGI skeptic. Specifically, he writes, quote, Over the last few years, I have gone from an AGI skeptic to being significantly worried about just how soon it will likely come to exist and how dramatically it will reshape the world. He goes on to discuss how humans dominate the planet because of our intelligence, and that we have driven many beings to extinction. He writes, quote, It is important to understand, this is a thing that actually happened. It is part of the natural history of Earth. There is well-known precedent for increases in intelligence being absolutely devastating for the life around it. The more I came to understand this, the more I came to view consciousness and intelligence as distinct phenomena. Both are rare, but while one is precious and fragile, the other is one of the universe's great hazards. Maybe it is possible for computers to take over after all. Elon's proposed solution is Neuralink's mission statement. If you can't beat them, join them. Elon's referenced this by saying there's really no surefire way to guarantee that humans don't get surpassed by computers. So instead, it's better to connect our human brains to computers as seamlessly as possible. In the future, Neuralink is aspiring to build such high bandwidth brain machine interfaces that humans can be nearly as capable as supercomputers can be. In this clip from an interview with Joe Rogan in 2020, he shares his estimated timeline for when Neuralink will enable human to human communication where there is no verbal speaking required. I believe this is a decently good proxy for thinking about when we'll have significantly merged man with machine enough so much so that it's practically impossible for computers to take over humans. Well, the first few iterations are, I mean, what I'm talking about is like in the limit over time, you know, with, with a lot of development. Um, the first few iterations, re really in the first few versions, all we're gonna be trying to do is, is solve it brain injuries. Um. So, so it's like, don't, don't, don't worry that it's not gonna sneak up on you. <laughs> this, this, this'll take a while. How many years before you don't have to talk? If the if the, if the development continues to accelerate, then maybe f like five years, five to ten years. That's quick. That's really quick. That's, that's the best case scenario. No talking anymore in five years. Best case scenario. <laughs> but um, ten ten years more like it. If Neuralink's successful with a small fraction of what they're wanting to accomplish, they'll have a greater net positive impact on humanity than the vast majority of companies to ever exist. Whether you're enthusiastic about Neuralink implants being able to treat major brain disorders like epilepsy, or you're enthusiastic about merging man with machine to essentially eliminate the need for smartphones, 
These advancements would be such amazing feats. They make the future one that we can look forward to. Then the next layer of potential for Neuralink is truly an evolutionary step for humanity. By merging man with machine and making communication orders of magnitude faster, humanity will take a giant leap forward in a similar way to when the printing press was invented. Another comparison is when the internet was invented. Elon has been trying to share with everyone how fundamentally game-changing artificial intelligence truly is. The byproduct of that fact is that Neuralink will also change the game. By advancing human intelligence to be on par with the very top of the intelligence food chain, humanity will have a far less likelihood of going extinct anytime soon. In Elon's conversation with Jack Ma, he continued to talk about AI and Neuralink. So that's my view about jobs. Don't worry about it. We will have jobs. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I think that, uh, yeah, over time, AI will make jobs kind of pointless. Probably the last job that will remain will be doing, writing AI software, and then eventually the AI will just write its own software. Like I said, I think we're going to have to figure out this Neuralink situation. Otherwise, we will be left behind. I still don't know about the idea that AI will make jobs pointless, but I suppose time will tell. Let me know in the comments what you think about AI. I read all the comments. Another demonstration of Elon showing his ongoing concerns about AI are the robots powered by AI at Boston Dynamics. For many years, Elon shared the progress the team's been making on their Atlas and Spot robots. In a tweet at the end of 2020, Elon wrote on Twitter, quote, this is not CGI or computer generated images. And he showed this video of robots dancing. They seem pretty cool and not very threatening to me. Thank you for watching this episode of Neuropod Premium. If you enjoyed this content, please support on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash neuropod. My name is Ryan Tanaka. Hope to see you at the next episode. <laughs>